All right, I'm here with uh, my main man, Navin, here, uh, somebody that I go to all the time when it comes to anything around the creator economy, NFTs, like pop culture, and uh, thank you for joining me here, Navin. You know I'm always happy to be here. Come on. Man, I, I, I thought it'd be really cool if we just hit on some like hot topics. I know we were sort of sharing some texts um, about what we wanted to talk about, but I wanted to get into the, the main juicy topic, <laughs> which is around Floyd Mayweather. Yes, sir. And Logan, yeah, Paul. Logan Paul. Now, what was your take uh, just generally about the fight? About the fight in general, it sucked. The first round was hilarious. When I don't know if you remember when Logan went crazy with his fist of fury. Outside of that, I'm just happy that Logan went eight rounds with the greatest boxer of all time. Then you can't take that away from him. Yeah. But the well, fight itself was kind of weak. <laughs> well, let me tell you, man. I, I, I think Logan Paul won the fight. I think, think he yeah. won the fight. I'll tell you why he won the fight. Number one... <laughs> is he lasted eight rounds with the greatest boxer of all exactly. time. A. Yep. B. He, he did you see his did you see his post game conference? He came <laughs> off as humble, he came as came off as authentic, yep. empathetic. Uh, he was he was almost crying. Like it, 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 to me it was like the transformation. Like you know in the WWE when the bad guy comes becomes the good guy all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. That was him. Like J Logan Paul was the guy that went to Japan and was like involved in, the, you know, there was like suicide hanging and stuff like that. And he was the ha most hated person on the internet. Yeah. To literally right after the fight, people were like, you know what? I like this guy. Seems like a good guy. Full 360, man. It's, it's crazy. Like it's, a, it's been a full 360. And what's even cooler about it is like Floyd endorsed him at the end of the fight. Yeah. Like he endorsed him as a great fighter. And that is going to give him so much more legs in the next few years for things he's going to do. And let me tell you about how it impacted the creator economy. Oh, yeah. You had Floyd Mayweather come through. What kind of fit? What, what was his hat? The OnlyFans all leather black Ooh. hat. <laughs> he came with the OnlyFans hat. OnlyFans hat. A, check, check. Okay? Yep. OnlyFans hat. Number two, Logan. Uh, it, it, it's like the apex of the creator economy. Here you have somebody who's creating content that basically made 40 to 50 million dollars off this fight. Yeah. Uh, this was the power of the internet where somebody can literally take a side door and yeah. you know, fight with some of the, great, the greatest fighter on the planet. Exactly, and think about it like, Logan is just another creator, another YouTuber at the end of the day, right? But he got in the ring with the greatest boxer of all time and how many people can actually do that? Yeah. I don't even know if Floyd may step in again, but also on the flip side, how smart is Floyd? How uh, smart is Floyd for getting back in the ring for a contracted exhibition match? Doesn't affect his record. Walked away with what? Maybe 30 mil? Well, you know, that, that, that's the thing with Floyd is that Floyd, he constantly said that this is a legalized bank robbery. <laughs> yeah. That's what he kept exactly. on saying. It's a legalized bank robbery, which I, which I really love. So, you know, to me, I think, I think um, yeah, obviously Floyd made, I don't know, like 100 mil off the fight. But to me, uh, Logan, Logan, won the, Logan won the fight. Yeah. And, and, and this is a uh, beautiful representation of what, the creator economy can get to. I mean, I thought Mr. Beast um, launching 300 virtual restaurants across North America, putting a dent in the, restu the restaurant yeah. game was the apex. This is the new apex, and the game is just starting. Just wait till you see what happens next. We, none of us know what's coming, and I feel like so many creators are working on some dope projects. It's going to be a fun rest of the year. Well, that's why I keep on saying this, and I will say this to the moon, that one day you're going to have a $1 billion, one-person yep. organization, and guess what? That is going to be a creator. Yeah. We, we say the power's with the individual. In the next 5, 10 years, some of the most influential people will be one singular person, which is crazy to think about. I love it, man. Well, now, now give me, I, I know you've been deep into the NFT uh, uh, game. Yeah. Uh, specifically NBA Top Shot. Oh, yeah. Now, what is, what is the state of play with Top Shot right now? Because the, the, in my opinion, what Dapper has done, they've flooded the market, which is fine. Listen, if, you, if, you, yeah. if you're into the, in this long game, they've flooded the market with supply. Yeah. And there's a, you know, if you go to the marketplace, things are super cheap. Two dollars. Two dollars. Yeah. And, <laughs> $1. And, and, you know, obviously for those who were part of the hype cycle before, you probably saw a lot of your account balance go down. Yeah. But, you know, what advice would you get, give to some folks that are, you know, into Top Shot now? And maybe they've seen their balance sort of decrease. Yeah, same advice I'm telling you when we first did this, when we first started, hodl. Hold everything as long as you can and do not sell anything. They're gonna, they just launched a bunch of new features this week uh, in terms of collector scores. You probably saw that. They're yep. starting to show you how many moments are being sold, held, burned. Like Dapper's working on a lot of functionality 
And even though our accounts have dropped, we're still just at the peak. No one knows what's coming yet. It's still in beta. That's what I always say. It's still in beta. Well, you know, I, th I, I think what's going to be exciting is when they actually build utility um, exactly. into yep. the NFT, meaning uh, what if you hold, you know, a certain number of Tyler heroes and now that will give you access to, you know, yep. merch or events or sort of like a backyard hang with Tyler. You know, th that's what I'm sort of looking at when yep. it comes to utility with NFTs. So something I saw a lot this week was individuals buying some of their favorite players and they have 100 to 300 of each moment. Yeah. And that's what exactly what I saw someone tweet. It's like, hey, I want to get a signed jersey because I own 300 of this player's jersey. I'm like, that's really smart. But also the utility side, I think they're slowly starting to get into it, like attending an NBA game like we talked about. What if you pull up to a game, you get a live moment that happened during that game. Yeah. Only if you were there in the arena can you get it. Yeah. I think we're just on the brink of it still. Well, man, I, anything else that you want to say about NBA Top Shot? And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Over, I've been so busy over the last month that I haven't bought a single thing. I was just going to ask. I haven't bought okay. a single thing off the marketplace, which I should. And I think the market is like ripe. And I'm just going to, to me, I'm just going to collect all the, I guess, the major, at, like the Lucas or the The Stags ones you know or, and believe yeah, exactly. in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Have you done any recent pack drops? Because there's some pack drops coming yeah. this week and last week. Are you still doing that? Yeah, yeah. I am still okay. doing the pack drops. I have been... Uh, I've been sometimes I, I go on, I'm slow to the punch. <laughs> I have gone some packs, but I, I've been getting some like not so great uh, cards. But you know what we need to do, right? What's we that? Need, we need to create a DAO. Yeah, okay. Towards the NBA Top Show. Well, explain to, cl explain to people what a DAO is. A, a simple terms and like simple terms is group ownership. Creating a DAO, smart contract on Ethereum is like we're going to do XYZ and there'll be certain rules and people that govern that. But it allows people to buy in at a very cheap price. Um, are you f into Board Apes Yacht Club? Have you seen that? B -A -Y -C? I, 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 I've seen it, and okay. I've seen everyone sort of change their like uh, <laughs> avatar. So but. crazy community cult, like one of the best NFT projects in the world right now. They just launched Kylo Ren. Yep. You may have heard of him. Yep. He's from India. He launched a DAO. I bought into the DAO. They sold 500,000 fractions. It was a crazy amount of Ethereum. They raised, I think, like 50 or 1,500 Ethereum or something like that. But you had over like 1,000 plus buyers do it. So when you think about a DAO, it's like allowing the community to buy into something and not break the bank. Yeah. I think collectively we're all sharing this experience of how it builds out over the next few years. Yeah, I mean, I think, it, I think it's super disruptive. I love the concept of sort of, you're, 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 you know, we talk about the, in, the individual having more power than any, you know, yeah. it, you know, the individual having power now, a DAO is a representation of, you know, like, you know, these superpowers sort of coming together. Exactly. I know we, we were gonna talk about the cooperation economy, which it's is perfect, probably something we chatted about with Packy McCormick. <laughs> Yes, uh, that, 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 you, that, that's where you're getting it from. Yeah, yeah. I, I read that piece, you know, and, and it, it's very much in line with like I, what I've been talking about, which is, and I, I loved his piece, which was like the liquid super teams, right? Yeah. So I, I've been mentioning it actually in my keynotes over the last couple of days about liquid super teams. I've been talking about it before as like yes. Avenger style model. Exactly. But I didn't have that that the, the drippy line, liquid super teams, which is, I think is really great. I have a counter take to liquid super teams, but I want to get your take on it. Well, what's, what's the counter? Because that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I think, I think the idea of getting really super, like superheroes together, like Avengers, like if we, us come together. Yeah. Okay, so great. You're a superhero. I'm a superhero. And obviously, like, we want to do a pod together. Right. What's holding us back? Well, time. Like, yeah. you know, you're so strength. involved in so many things. I'm so involved in so yeah. many things. And by the way, doing everything digital, it's hard to do. You actually need superpowers, superheroes to come together. You know, he likened it to the idea of the Avengers. At some point, the Avengers have to get together to beat Thanos. Like, can't do it separately. Exactly. You, you can't work. So, so to me, like, that's where it breaks. And I saw it in consulting. Like, in consulting, the same model, you bring really smart people, like, superhero skills together. But what holds it back? Time and the fact that you need to come together. Uh, to me, that's the counter take. And I know when everything is like fluid and digital and liquid, it's like really easy to do. But ultimately, you don't get the best of people's superpowers unless you're together. But, you know, the, 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 like Kevin Durant, James Harden and Kyrie Harry. Irving are not going to beat LeBron, Thanos, like at home. <laughs> they got to beat them. They got to beat them together. They got to be. Yeah, exactly. Not so singular. that's my opinion. No, I, I totally agree with you. And I think time is, like you said, the biggest thing, the biggest constraint when it comes to that. Yeah, but, but, but when it comes to the cooperation game yep. and we want to combine people together, you want to make a DAO. It's like, how much time do you have? Like, I want to do a million things too, but it's like really important people yep. are, they probably don't have the time. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm being blunt. 
Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you. I think it's case by case person basis, but I also think like we're in a unique time where like there's a lot of good entrepreneurs and people who understand how to manage their time so much better than the other entrepreneur. And I think those are the ones you need to target. Easier said than done. Yeah. But you know, again, I just feel like there's so many cool things that can be done. Like you said, like how much time can we give to all these different projects? Even though just like you, you probably want to dabble in a million things a day. Yeah. But you can't. Yeah. Right. I've been I've been trying you know, like with the NFT stuff, like I've been trying to dabble as much as I can. And then like, I'm really, I, I, I know I messaged you about the mirror thing. Like I'm, I'm like close yeah. to getting into like this mirror. You're close. Like I'm in the leaderboard. I'm like number nine right now, but that's uh, really good, which is good. Yeah. Well, the 10, the first 10 go through, I've been waiting for like months. I've been trying to like get people to vote for me. Oh my God. Anyways, it's like the longest I'm going to get in 2028. <laughs> um, the, the, the problem is, is that like, I'm not as I'm, I'm, I'm still immersed in the it, like the old world, right? The digital world. While many people in the crypto NFT space, you know, they're 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 sort of in. Anyways, I, I'm gonna get in there and do more things. Um, I want to. I know we got we're kind of running out of time, but I want to ask you about uh, metaverse. Yeah. Listen, everyone's talking about the metaverse. What what is your take? What are some of the exciting things that you're seeing in the metaverse? I think for a lot of us, it's still super confusing as to what's going on. But I'm still super, super bullish on the metaverse. We just talked about Krista Kim and her house and the Mars house selling. That's a cool concept. We've seen, we're seeing digital land being sold everywhere. We're seeing um, all these NFTs and projects pop up, and it's really cool. But I'm still bullish on genies. Like, I'm really bullish on the fact that in the future, we're going to have a digital avatar that we want to spend money on, and we want to interact with people, and we're going to throw our VR, VR headset on and live in a different world. And I think a lot of people actually are going to be looking forward to that because they want to escape from the current state of whatever reality they're living in. Yeah. So I just feel like the metaverse has so much potential, but we don't really understand what it's going to be yet. Well, to me, to me, uh, the metaverse is really, um, I think it, it's inevitable because you have kids that are already playing in the metaverse. Yeah. They're Roblox. already in Roblox. They're exactly. already sort of in Fortnite. They're building yep. their own worlds. They're learning about the economy. They're learning about architecture in Roblox. You know, uh, I don't know if you saw this, like recently Gucci... Yeah. Gucci had this thing in Roblox where they had like a $4,000 Gucci bag that cost more than the actual it's crazy. Uh, Gucci bag yep. in real life. Um, I think that's where we're getting to. I think the, the brands that actually understand the metaverse, I think Gucci understands it. That's why they've integrated with Roblox. Like, like when are we going to see in the lab in, in the metaverse? Trust me, you, you already know that I'm working on so many different things from coins to metaverses to NFTs. And it's like, and it's something I want to say is like the biggest thing has been education. Like, how can we keep educating people? And like, Gary Vee did a great job with VFriends. We talked about that. But we need more of that. Yeah. I think we need more big names to come on and educate the masses so it can be easier for, like, some of the smaller guys like us to start, you know, reinventing our brand and our game with that. Yeah. Well, listen, we're going to chat more. We're going to chat more uh, about this. And, uh, man, I just appreciate you coming here. Always. We're, we're, we're doing a keynote with Canada Post. Uh, talking about the future of e-commerce, DTC. Um, perfect. That's why I want to have you here because I think what you guys are doing in the lab is uh, incredible. Thank you. I always appreciate you, bro. I can't wait for the keynote. That's awesome. Ooh, the energy is fire. It, bro. <laughs> it's fire. Okay.